Hello everyone, I'm Max. Hi, my name is Yuri. We at Deep Systems continue to create lectures about state-of-the-art deep neural network architectures. And today we are going to consider the main principles of building end-to-end -end recognition systems, such as speech recognition or image OCR. Max, sounds great. First of all, it's good to say a few words about the task. There are two most popular applications speech recognition and image OCR. In case of speech recognition, we would like to feed sound wave to the network and get the labeling Apple as output. In case of image OCR, we will feed image to the neural network and also get labeling Apple. In both cases, we want to transcribe unsegmented input data into a word or phrase. Before we continue, we must explain the meaning of the word unsegmented. In other words, the length of output differs from the length of input sequence. And it is important to understand that we cannot match which part of input sequence corresponds to output symbol. Thus, in most cases, we cannot pre-segment input sequence. Fortunately, there is a great loss function called CTC that will help us to train such systems. Also, this lecture consists of two parts. In this first part, we will consider main principles behind network architecture for end-to-end -end recognition systems. Here is a link to Keras example that nicely illustrates concepts we will discuss. In the next part, we will cover CTC loss in details. Here is a link to great paper from Alex Graves. Max, can you give some applications of such end-to-end systems that are widely used in production today? Yes, of course, the examples are on the next slide. This type of architectures is widely used in well-known production applications, such as Google Voice Search or Baidu DeepSpeech. Good example of image OCR example in production is explained in Dropbox's tech blog. You can follow the links for more information. It's really important topic. Also, we at Deep Systems used to build OCR solutions a lot. We felt a lack of information on the topic when we started to dive into this field. So, let's start with high-level overview of architecture. We are going to describe main principles with image OCR example. Firstly, image is fitted to convolutional neural network to extract image features. The next step is to apply a recurrent neural network to these features, followed by the special decoding algorithm. This decoding algorithm takes LSTM outputs from each time step and produces the final labeling. Max, I have a question. Here we can see several popular deploying components, such as CNN and LSTM. But there is a well-known product called Tesseract OCR Engine, with more than 15 years history. Why can't we use it? So, I suppose that all who faced this task tried this pro product first. From our experience, this out-of-the-box solution gave poor performance for such tasks as number plate recognition and text recognition from images. Accuracy for number plate recognition task was around 10%, while our in-house solution gave us around 98%. Yes, yeah, that's correct. Let's consider this model in details. Image has the following shape. Height equals to 64, width equals to 128, and number of channels equals to 3. As you have seen before, we feed this image to convolutional neural network feature extractor and it produces tensor with such shape. We put image apple to the feature tensor so you can understand how to interpret it. Height equals to 4, width equals to 8, these are spatial dimensions, and number of channels equals to 4. Thus, we transform input image with 3 channel to 4 channel tensor. In practice, number of channels should much be 
Мо... Блять, сука, сейчас я просто вырежу, давай просто отсюда начну. In practice, number of channels should be much more bigger, but we constructed small network only because everything fit on the slide. Next, we do reshape operation. Here you can see how we slice tensor among the widths, stretch the 4x4 matrix to vector of 16 elements. Thus, we obtain the sequence of 8 vectors of 16 elements. After that, we feed first vector to the LSTM network and get its output, also the vector of 16 elements. Then we apply fully connected layer followed by softmax layer and get the vector of six elements. This vector contains probability distribution of observing alphabet symbols at first LSTM step. In our toy example, we define alphabet as a set of five letters plus special blank symbol. Thus, the quadrial of alphabet equals to six. Here, blank symbol is a special symbol that we always should add to the alphabet. It will be further understood what it is used for. Let's look at final vector. The first element of this vector is the probability of observing symbol A at first time step. The second element of this vector is also the probability of observing symbol E at first time step and so on for all other letters in our alphabet. Then we feed the second vector to the LSTM that produces new vector. Now we apply fully connected layer followed by softmax layer and get the vector of six elements as we did before. This vector contains probability distribution of observing alphabet symbols at second time step, and so on. We have eight network outputs at different times that are conditionally independent. Here on the slide you can see the toy example. We designed simplified neural network to have eight outputs. It means that we cannot recognize more than eight characters per image. In practice, the number of outputs can reach 32 or 64 or more. The choice will depend on the specific task. Also in production, it is better to use multilayered bidirectional LSTM, but this simple example explains only the most important concepts. Listen, the number of outputs is fixed by design. Can we replace LSTM with more simple neural network, for example, CNN? Yes, of course we can, but we will obtain lower accuracy. The usage of LSTM gives us few benefits. Firstly, the model looks at the image from left to right and it has memory. It allows us to take into account entire sequence of rigid symbols. Secondly, this recurrent model learns to model language implicitly while training. When the model is not sure about which symbol it should predict, language understanding will help to think out an answer. Outputs from all steps are fitted to some decoding algorithm that produces final labeling apple. But how does decoding algorithm work? So, let's figure it out. So, we have 8 vectors of probabilities at each time step. Let's take most probable symbol at first time step. Here it is A. We can do this simply by applying argmax function. Also, we do the same at next time step and get the letter P and repeat action for all other steps. As a result, we obtain the string of 8 characters, one most probable later at each time step. Then 
we have to glue all consecutive repeating characters into one. In our example, two E letters are glued to single one. Special blank character allow us to split symbols that are repeated in the original labeling. We added blank symbol to the alphabet to teach our network to predict, to predict blanks between such case symbols. Then we remove all blanks. These two operations are called as B function and will be used in the next part of the lecture devoted to CTC loss. This simple algorithm is called best pass decoding. It's very easy to implement and popular. It is okay to use this algorithm in practice, but there are also exist more sophisticated alternatives. So, now we understand how to do forward pass for our network. It's really simple. But you can ask me a reasonable question. How we should train such, such a network? And CTC loss is the answer. This loss was designed by Alex Grace in 2006 and nonetheless it is still one of the most popular and effective methods for end-to-end -end training. This loss takes 8 vectors of probabilities and ground rule labeling, evaluate error and allows us to do backprop and so on. And we will do detailed explanation of CTC loss in next lecture. Stay with us. Thank you very much. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. We also have some products, Supervisely and Movix. Supervisely is a cool annotation tool with a lot of useful stuff for computer vision researchers. And Movix is an interactive movie recommender system based on LSTM network. So, goodbye. Thank you. Bye.